another beautiful good morning from the Black Forest. I'm here on the way up to Belchen, 1414 meters, the third highest mountain in the Black Forest. First one, so the highest, is Feldberg, 1493, did that yesterday. Then the second is second highest is called Herzogenhorn. It's 1415 meters. So it's one meter higher than this one, than Belgian. Alright. The hike today will be around 15 kilometers. Should be 650 to 700 meters of altitude gain. Uh, the description says it's around, hiking time is around six hours. Let's see. I don't think it's six hours, but you never know. The recommended direction for this hike is clockwise. Well, recommended. It's the one that how it is described in the books and on the website. I'm doing it counterclockwise, so opposite direction. Why do I do it this direction? Because uh, if you do it clockwise, you start going up along the cable car. Yeah? It's a cable car going up to Belgium. So you start going all along the cable car and then you come down on this side and the reviews say that this side coming down then is much more much nicer than the area with the cable car. So I said to myself, okay, I prefer having a, the nicest part uphill. Yeah, and then reaching the summit. And then after that, I don't care anymore if there's cable car station or something. So it will be the same idea then that I had uh, with the felt bag which I did yesterday. I also did it against the uh, recommended direction and said, okay, I want to have all the cable cards in the end and not in the beginning. But it's just personal preference. You can do what you think is best for you. I think there's a reason why they recommend these hikes with the cable car first in that direction because then you know if you're a bit older or you you, you feel weak or you're not fit enough uh, you can use the cable car to go all the way up and then just hike down yeah that's the idea behind it so but if you I know I don't need the cable car up so I can easily walk on this side. No, I'm a I'm an uphill person. I prefer uphill over downhill. Uphill is the exercise. I can completely I get into the rhythm, it's fine. But downhill, you know, never downhill I never know. Sometimes my knees start to hurt, stuff like that. So I prefer the uphill part. Yeah, is that weird? <laughs> Not so camouflage today with the red shirt. <laughs> Anywho, uh, two recommendations about how to get to this hike or to any hike here in the Black Forest. Public transport, so buses, go to all the hikes. Yeah. There's a bus stop just down there 
the start and end of the hike. It's a loop hike. So super easy. Uh, if you arrive by car, like I did this morning, use common sense, yeah? Don't trust Google Maps. <laughs> because Google Maps set me up that super steep road uh, up to the pass here where the hike started. Super steep road. Suddenly, I was on the main road and suddenly, yeah, turn left, turn left. And then it went just straight up to the path. There were signs all over, over the place. Oh, don't go here in winter and things like that. And then came past one house and the guy was looking at me from the balcony. He's like, what are you doing? <laughs> okay, yeah, so use common sense. Just stay on the main road. If Google wants you to go on a side road, steep uphill, yeah, there's no need, don't do it. Fortunately, there was no other car coming because the road was very narrow and then, you know, if you go uphill and you have to stop in reverse or something and have to let the other car through, yeah, it's potentially dangerous. Whew, okay, enough talking. Let's hike a little bit. Beautiful, beautiful forest. So, if you see a bathtub, yeah, somewhere. <laughs> if you see a bathtub on a hike in Bavaria or also Austria or here in the Bavarian forest, yeah, it's for cows, yeah, they, they use it, use these old bathtubs, put them on the fields, fill them with water or uh, let the rain water fill them up and then it's just well the well the animals can drink. Yeah. Oh super nice bench here. Look at that. Good carvings. Woods. Yeah. And a backpack. Oh how cute is that? Well, 13 kilometers when you come from the other direction. <laughs> so I think I did two, two and a half kilometers now. The nice thing about doing the hike against the popular or the described direction is that you hardly meet anyone in the beginning. It was the same yesterday when I hiked up to Feldberg. I think the first, the whole morning, the first half of the day, until lunchtime, I hardly met anyone. Because most of the people were doing it the opposite direction. And then, you know, starting from lunchtime, you start to meet these people, or they come into your direction. So today, this morning, hiking since almost one hour. I haven't seen a single other hiker. I saw two trail runners yeah, who came down from the mountain. But this probably started early, did their run before breakfast. So no other hiker so far. But also the car park was not busy down there. It was maybe 10 cars. So it's 
maybe 20 people here on the mountain at the moment and I have the feeling they all went into the other direction or of course they somewhere are in front of me and I might overtake them somewhere but you I usually don't overtake people I'm not a super fast hiker Whew. oh correction I saw one other hiker down there at the very beginning of the hike uh, was a girl with big backpack and a dog even the dog had little backpacks <laughs> and she was obviously on a on a long distance hike I would say Ooh, the Westweg yeah Westweg is this long distance trail that goes through the Black Forest and I think this section of my hike today is part of that long distance hike so but she seemed to be pretty fast so she took off and haven't seen her since then but of course I waited a little bit until she was out of sight so that I could do my filming <laughs> without other people oh, so green Another nicely carved bench, more boots and mushrooms. <laughs> oh, single boot, it was the second one. Yeah, it's 11 now, one and a half hours in, I'm sweaty, it's quite some uphill now, still going uphill, but now it opened up and has these beautiful views.
I would benefit from a little break now, like a bench, one of these nicely carved benches. There was one down there, but it was already taken by the that other hiker with the doggo. <laughs> so I couldn't stop there. But now I think I'm almost already reaching kind of the summit area. You can see light there in the distance. I think that's where it opens up. By the way, apart from the hiker and the dog, I now met three other hikers who came towards me on the way down. And it's quarter past 11 now, almost two hours in. So it was very quiet for a Sunday, for a Sunday with good weather. I thought it would be way more crowded. However, I expect the summit and the, especially the hut there to be very crowded. Fingers crossed. Here it opens up. So we came from. Now we are up here. Yeah. So summit is somewhere that direction. Oh, there are other hikers. Sign says, uh, depending where you go, you can go that direction, that, that direction, or that direction. It's half a kilometer. So I took the longer one, which goes to another viewpoint first, before it reaches the summit. There <laughs> was a warning sign saying there, oh, danger, danger, this is an alpine path. So, yeah, let's, let's see. Of course, always take these warning signs serious, yeah? You have to know what you are capable of. So. If it says alpine path, it usually means it's a narrow path and uh, potentially if you lose balance you can fall down. Like for example this is like, you know, it's narrow there and there, there's the edge. If you fall here then, yeah, I mean, you will break something. <laughs> and this is more meant for if you, yeah, if you don't have the right footwear, or if you're with kids, or if you're just not familiar with mountain paths, then you should avoid this. But usually, if you have been in the mountains before, if you've done some hiking, this should be fine. And however, you can always turn around there, yeah, have a look, and then if you don't like it, turn around. See, it's a nice view here. Also, here's the bench that I was looking for. The funny thing is, just in front of the bench is a sign saying, oh, danger of falling rocks. <laughs> so why would you put the bench there? Like, okay, logic. So here they put some handrails. Oh, bridge over there. Interesting.
And here we are already at the other end of that alpine path. <laughs> and here it goes up to the summit. So, was a, my opinion, very average, normal mountain path. But the reason is they, where they put up all these warning signs is because it's close to the summit and there's a cable car going up to the summit. Yeah? So whenever you have a cable car going up to a place, you have all sorts of people. You have people in sandals, flip-flops, you know, tourists, bare feet. <laughs> I don't know. I think bare feet is better than flip-flops. You know what I mean, yeah? People who are not prepared and it's then for them to scare them off. They say, yeah, don't go there. Because, of course, with flip-flops, <laughs> anything like that, can be dangerous. So, Whew, wear proper footwear. Look at that. Beautiful view. Should be good view today from the summit. Almost there. Almost there. Hey, start to see the summit cross. There you go. There we are. So when I said I expect the place to be busy. I did not expect it to be so busy. <laughs> oh wow. But beautiful view. <laughs> okay, that was the Belgian summit. Took me oh, a bit more than two hours to get up here. Super busy, super busy. <laughs> But good that he was absolutely not busy during the hike. Plus everyone up here, I would say almost of people took cable car, just enjoyed a good view. And now I will go down to the hut. I think that's also where the cable car station is. And let's try to get a drink and something to eat. It's lunchtime. It's yeah, quarter to twelve. Started hiking 9.30, so it's Approximately two hours for the uphill part. Now let's see what the hut has to offer. You can already see the hut over there. You can even go up here by mountain bike or many e-bikes here. So I would use an e-bike too. It's a cool option I think to be active and cycle up a mountain. I think the average person cannot make it up a mountain with a normal bike. Yeah, very busy. Gasthof Bärchen. And behind there is the cable car. All right, there was the summit, there was the hut, sticks are already ready, now it's going down.
Oh, the thing always along the cable car. That's what I told you in the beginning. That some reviews of the hike say that uh, all the way uphill was so ugly because it was along the cable car. The downhill part is much better. Yeah, I agree. For me, the uphill part was very nice now. Now we reached the summit. Because everything was fine until reaching the summit and then suddenly it was busy with people. Huh? But now it's okay. I accept it. There's a cable car. Many people on this side of the mountain. But I'm going down. The hike is... After the summit, the hike is kind of over, you know. So it's just returning now to the car. That's why I think for me this works better. But it's all personal preferences. Some people like the view of the cable cars. <laughs> Not too bad, it's a it's a pretty cable car. <laughs> so the path always goes back into the forest, moves away from the cable car so you don't see it the whole time. No. Which I don't think it's it's too bad. But it's definitely more busy here. More people coming up here at the moment. But it's also later in the day, of course, it's after lunch. Another nicely carved bench here. Again, we have the boots, classic, oh, with flowers this time, oh. awesome. And on the other side, we have a backpack with a squirrel, yeah, sneaky squirrel trying to steal something from the backpack. Oh, has an injured, injured ear, oh. but it's still smiling, so, oh, good. Okay, I arrived at the cable car station and in front of me is the reason why uh, it's so busy on this side and so busy on the mountain because there's a gigantic car park. <laughs> so people park here and then hike up or take the cable car up and for me it was just half an hour down so I would say walking up here to the, at least to the, to the hut is maybe one hour and if you come from the other side where I came from it's two hours so, but of course this is not the end of my hike uh, it just is like I don't know it's not even halfway down because I have to make a big loop uh, to get back to my own car park so what's confusing here you come down this side, the hike continues by walking through this hotel gate here. Okay, I think I found the exit. <laughs> exit of this cable car area. Now we are on our way away from the cable car, hoping that it gets less busy now. Going, the path goes back on a forest road, back into the forest. That's what forest roads do, right? They go into the forest. <laughs> Sorry if it sounds as if I complain a lot. 
No, it's not it's not the case. I just want to be straight, open and informative. Uh, I think the the planners of this, this route did the very best to make it as beautiful as possible. Now I'm back in the forest, it's very nice. They try, I can already tell by the, the way the path loops around here that they try to uh, stay away from the road and from the cable, cable car and all this stuff. Yeah, it's not their fault that it's there. <laughs> so they, they tried the best that hikers have a good time here and I'm having a very good time. It's a beautiful hike. Yay, another calf bench here. I love those. You have the boots again. Oh, look at this. Nikitna. Hello. <laughs> and that's there. Ooh, binoculars. And a backpack. Super cool. I think it's another three kilometers back to where I started. Uh, since the cable car station is mostly uh, forest roads, but it's nice. Uh, it's just that it was just that one particular area around the cable car station with the car park, and the road. That's a bit out of place. Because everything else of this hike is really, really, really nice. Also here, this area now it goes up and down, up and down. It's not just, hey, I'm going down from the mountain. No, it's just really up, down, up, down. Left, right, left, right. <laughs> Look at the valleys, the fields, trees, in the forest again, outside again. Very pretty. Yeah. For example, now it goes uphill again. And I have nothing smarter to do than vlogging. <laughs> yeah, also a uh, number of hikers. Just seen four other hikers now since I left that cable star station area. So the only busy area is between cable car station and the summit. Everything else is super quiet. So, so I don't also don't really think it really matters what direction you do it. Like I said, it's personal preferences. What part you want to have in the morning, what part you want to have in the afternoon. I like it the way I did it. But I'm sure next time. In order to really give a recommendation, I have to do both directions, right? So next time I will do it the recommended clockwise direction. Ooh, okay, I better walk now. Okay, out of the forest, back in civilization. There's the road down there, bikers, and the sign post that is counting down the kilometers for us says one kilometer. Yay! Whew, almost there. Okay.
Thank you, Bärchensteig. That was wonderful. Okay, down there is a car park. So, time to wrap up the video. Thanks everyone for having joined me today on this beautiful hike in beautiful Black Forest up to Bärchen, the Bärchensteig up to Bärchen. 1,414 meters, the third highest mountain in the Black Forest. I think we covered many aspects of this hike. I hope that helps you a little bit. If not, I hope that at least it was entertaining. I'm sorry, I've stolen it from another YouTuber. <laughs> so yeah, but it's true. I hope you got something out of it. You can make your own decision and what direction you want to do it and get an impression how it looks like and otherwise if I could entertain entertain you for however length this video will have 10 minutes 20 minutes I'm happy I'm happy and I'm speed and I hope you will join me again on the next hike, on the next adventure. Bye, see you.